and I don't want to be reflectively negative, but, but I do think we need to look at the deal in its entirety and, and, and frankly, push the president's view on the deal aside, push Secretary Kerry's view on the deal aside. Uh, I don't mean to be overly critical, but they've got a track record of saying things that are useful for the moment rather than reflecting the reality. And that was General Michael Hayden on this program yesterday saying to set aside the viewpoint of the administration and the Secretary of State and view this possible deal with Iran on its own merits. Let's continue our conversation now with a spokesman for the National Council of Resistance of Iran, Ali Safavi, also from Newsmax Washington, former Congressman Michael Flanagan, and we're adding to the discussion that noted attorney and Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz. Ali, let's begin with you. Obviously, you're part of the Iranian resistance. Do you welcome statements like that from General Hayden? Well, I think General Hayden was spot on. I think you have to really understand what this deal is all about. Remember, all of these negotiations began with preventing Iran from having the capability to get a nuclear bomb. And of course, as these talks have progressed, we see that Iranians' right to enrichment has been recognized. There's a lot of back and forth about how many centrifuges Iran can keep. There is no mention whatsoever of dismantling Iran's uh, nuclear infrastructure, whether it is Natanz, the heavy water reactor in Iraq, or the secret uh, site in Qom. And so it seems to me that as, as, as time has progressed, Iranians have, the Iranian regime has been able to extract more and more concessions from the P5 plus one and the United States. And, and so in that respect, uh, General Hayden is absolutely correct that, that one really has to examine whether this deal at the end of the day would prevent Iran from getting the bomb. And quite frankly, as it is now, I, I seriously doubt that this would be the case. Alan, you have spoken before of your support politically for President Obama, yet you have not hesitated to take him to task uh, during our discussions of this situation involving Iran. Mindful of that, uh, though General Hayden was somewhat diplomatic in what he had to say, uh, was that the right thing for General Hayden to say on our program yesterday? Uh, no, I think it was, uh, and I think we are seeing a horrible example of very bad negotiating on the part of the uh, Obama administration. They seem to be giving up everything, and they're sending out the message. For example, in the Fareed Zakaria show on CNN this weekend, they had five guests. Four of them were saying the same thing, and that is, don't make any proposals that the Iranians might reject, because this deal is better than no deal. What they were really saying is any deal is better than no deal. Once you tell the Iranians that, you put them in the driver's seat. You say to them, look, anything you don't want, we're not going to put forward as a proposal. Uh, we're just going to do what you want because we want a deal. We need a deal more than you need a deal. If you ever had anybody negotiating a business contract or a lease with that frame of mind, you'd be giving away the store. And that's what the United States is doing, is giving away the store. For example, one thing that Netanyahu asked for seemed so reasonable. Even if you don't begin the deal with Iran giving up its terrorism and its destruction of Israel threat, before the deal ends, before the sunset provision kicks in, Iran should give up terrorism, should give up exporting uh, its uh, ideology to neighboring countries, and should give up its threats against Israel. If they don't do that, then the deal doesn't end. The sunset provision doesn't kick in. Everybody was screaming and yelling, no, 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 don't ask the Iranians for that, because they'll say no, and that'll give them an excuse to end the deal. Well, the truth is the Iranians need to deal more than the Americans need to deal. And we're negotiating from weakness, not from strength. It's terrible negotiation strategy. Uh, Professor Dershowitz, I, I think you give the administration too much credit. I, I, I'm sorry, I just think you do. I, I think they want to deal for domestic political reasons. I think they have to have some kind of deal because I think the deal that they've really worked out is they're going to make a lot of releases from Guantanamo. They'll accept a proxy army from Iran and Iraq so that we don't have to send troops there, so that Obama administration doesn't have to relight that war. They can fight it in a proxy war with Iran. And by way of give back for that, we'll, get, we'll make whatever deal, we'll make as best a deal, but we're going to make a deal with you. And it's going to let you in the long term get the bomb. I think that's the deal. Well, fair and now enough. they need something and to back it up. I'm paper. 
Michael, as you've laid that out, let's be fair about this. We will let uh, Professor Dershowitz come back and respond to the scenario you set out. We also want to thank Ali Safavi of the Iranian Resistance Council for joining us from Newsmax Washington. Tell you what, we're coming back to continue the conversation and have Alan Dershowitz respond to the scenario set forth by Michael Patrick Flanagan. He'll do so right after this timeout on America's Forum.